Today I have a character build that I am quite excited about. This character is named the Iron Bull. And one of the reasons I'm so excited about this character is that it really came together because of you guys. This character was developed in the comments section of our Minotaur deep dive. It was pretty cool to see that a lot of us in the community were all thinking about a strength based ranger Minotaur all at the same time and we came together and made it work. And I gotta say, that was quite a rewarding experience. So, without further ado, the Iron Bull. As stated, we're going to be a Minotaur, and we're gonna start out with some pretty weird stats. And these weird stats actually go a long way in this build to lend to a lot of our decision making, but it was definitely a unique take on stats and, and a fun challenge to try and work around. So to start out, we're gonna take 15 in Strength, 13 in Dex, 12 in Constitution, eight in Intelligence, 15 in Wisdom, and then eight in charisma. We're going to take a plus one, plus two stat spread. The plus two is going into strength. The plus one is going into wisdom. At level one, we're going to take fighter. We have a lower than average constitution and we are really reliant on our concentration in this build. So I really wanted to have proficiency in our constitution saving throws. Fighter is a good way to do that. On top of that, we're a strength-based ranger. We do not have 14 decks and we want better armor than that. So we really wanted heavy armor as well. So taking fighter at level one gives us that heavy armor. I'm going to be taking the defense fighting style. It's really important that we don't get hit very often. So heavy armor, shield, defense fighting style is going to give us enough AC that we can expect not to be hit by attacks super often, which is going to help protect our low constitution. This build is really revolving around alternative defensive features to be able to have a high wisdom and a high strength at the expense of our constitution. So we're really building around that low constitution here. Defense fighting style really helps with that. At level two, we're going to pick up Ranger. I'm taking all the optional features like I normally do with Rangers. Everything that came with Tasha's is selected. Everything that was, was not is removed. And we're going to take Expertise in Athletics. Expertise in Athletics actually makes us quite a scary grappler even this early. And our grappling game is only going to get scarier and scarier. At level three, we're going to take our second level in Ranger and we're going to pick up the thrown weapon fighting style. We are going to be thrown weapon fighters. And the reason for this is that we are going to be revolving around our spike growth. And we don't wanna run into spike growth, but we wanna have strength-based ranged attacks. So it's really important to us that we have thrown weapons on hand. The thrown weapon fighting style lets us basically multi-attack with thrown weapons, and it's really gonna make our build come together. This was an actually rather elegant solution that Fledgling came up with because I was struggling when I was thinking about this build, how to make it work if they weren't just conveniently standing on the exact spot we needed them to. Thrown weapons was the answer. As far as our spells go, I'm picking up Absorb Elements. Now Absorb Elements I usually take far later than this, but because our low constitution and our high AC, Absorb Elements is going to manage a lot of our dexterity saving throws and to protect us from taking massive damage which we do not have the health to take massive damage. And so we really need it. And it further plays into our alternative defensive style here. On top of that, I'm going to take Entangle. Entangle is going to be our fight winning spell. And it's it combined with our above average martial capabilities at this point. Entangle is going to help us get to where we are fully set up. At level four, I'm taking Swarm Keeper. Now this is the moment where I want to talk about the flavor of this build. I envision this build as a minotaur that is fully plated. You know, even the horns are still plated and it has like forge fire glowing eyes behind this just metal shell. I think of this as a very intimidating creature of just iron and bullishness and just moving towards you. I like that visual. And the Swarm Keeper, if you guys have seen Naruto, Sasori has the puppet with the Iron Sand, the fourth Kazakage. That's our Swarm. I envision this bull walking towards you, fully plated, glowing red eyes, but there's this Iron Sand that's just floating around him and he can manipulate this Iron Sand to his advantage. I really love the visual and we're gonna play into it more as we go. This isn't your average Ranger, this is a Ranger of metal and fire. At level five, I'm going to be picking up the Crusher Feet. Now this was an interesting debate between Crusher and slasher and if we're talking about this debate let's begin with their crit effect it's the smallest part of their effect so let's begin with it if slasher crits it means they have disadvantage on all of their attacks if crusher hits it means our team has advantage on all of their attacks both for one turn now this is really dependent on your party if you have no one who attacks besides you then slasher is going to be better but overall i'd say crusher is going to be more consistent because 
not all of your enemies are going to be making attacks. Some are going to be spellcasters, some are going to have abilities, and so on and so forth. So I think Crusher takes the edge here. As for Slasher versus Crusher's main effect, Slasher is definitely better on your huge or larger creatures because Crusher doesn't work for those. On top of that, hitting an enemy who's right in the middle of spike growth means now they're in difficult terrain with minus 10 movement. They start with 30 movement speed. Well, first you minus the 10 feet of movement, so they're at 20, and then it's halved down to 10. That's not a lot of movement speed to get out of that spike growth, and you can keep someone contained for quite some time. However, on the other side, we have Crusher, where you can move people more in the spike growth, so it can do some extra damage with that five foot movement speed. But an interesting combination with Minotaur is that when you hit an enemy with a bludgeoning attack, you can move them five feet in any direction. So you can move them five feet in the air and then they're gonna immediately fall down. But you can also immediately as written, use your horn weapon attack to try and shove them and they're at five feet above you. When there's two things that are at the exact same time, immediately and immediately, the player gets to decide which one happens first. And credit to Trey and Monk for explaining all this to me because I didn't actually understand this. Credit goes to him for that. But once they're up in the air, you can go ahead and headbutt them and knock them into the air. So they're gonna fall 10 feet, fall prone. So now you can knock them prone in the middle of your spike growth. And now they have to stand up and they're gonna have half movement speed and then they're gonna have to move through the spike growth. Now this is gonna do less damage because you're knocking them through the air than just knocking them with your horns directly into the spike growth where they're gonna take that bonus extra damage. And Crusher really opens up a ton of combinations. The combination of Swarm Keeper's forced movement, Crusher's forced movement, and our grappling for forced movement. We have a ton of combos depending on where they're set up and depending on what our goal is. If our goal is just to control them, we might focus on knocking them prone with our Crusher horns combo. If we're focused on damage, we might do a thrown weapon attack, hit them, Crusher drags them five feet towards us, and then Swarm Keeper might drag them 15 feet closer to us. That's one attack, and we just dragged them 20 feet, potentially through spike growth. Then we can grab them, and using our movement speed, drag them through 15 feet more of spike growth and still have them grappled at the end of the turn. Maybe we start our turn out, we grapple them with our first attack, drag them through spike growth, and then hit them with our melee weapon attack with our thrown weapon that we can use in melee as well, and then use our horns to knock them deep into our spike growth afterwards. There's a whole bunch of combination potentials here, and it's really fun to mix and match which one comes first, how you can chain them together to just do absolutely crazy amounts of damage and to control at the same time. I got a little ahead of myself because at the point we get Crusher, we don't actually have spike growth because that comes in at level six. Level six, we've gone Ranger five. So it was fighter one, Ranger to this point. We get our extra attack and we get spike growth. To flavor our spike growth, it's our iron sand molding together. Like again, if you've seen Naruto and you've seen the those spikes that it creates in the air, we're just doing the same thing on the ground. We can take our sandy iron, mold it together. And that's how I envision these spikes. So at this level, our play style has come together. What we're about is creating spike growth and then using our forced movement and our excellent grappling to take advantage of it. And we really come online at level six. For level six, we're relying on just being a decent marshal with entangle. That's what we're about. This is where we start shining. It is worth mentioning at this point that we do have other spells. We don't really want to compete with our second level spell very much. So I'll focus on entangle and absorb elements. We can't use spike growth every fight. So entangle is still good for, hey, this isn't the most important fight, but I still want to have a fight winning spell. Entangle can come in clutch there. I also want to pick up Pass Without Trace. Even though it does compete with our second level spells, there's going to be days where we're not getting into combat and we are doing infiltration things and we are terrible at stealth. This helps round that out. So at level seven, we're going to go fighter two and we pick up Action Surge. Action Surge goes a long way with either continuing our combo or to just use it as our initial startup turn where we can action, spike growth, action surge now we can get into our combo right away and we don't have to wait a whole turn but if we already do have the spike growth set up and we do have action surge we can use it to continue our combo most of the things we do moving them with swarm keeper crusher our horns can only be done once per turn so action surge isn't adding a bunch of extra movement but you know if you have them grappled you can do an action dash to drag them through more spikes for some pretty good damage as well at level eight we take fighter three and we're going to pick up rune knight so one of our weaknesses with this build is that crusher and our horns don't work with enemies that are huge or bigger. And that's because they're over one size bigger than us. Rune Knight lets us be one size bigger. And so we take that weakness and we kind of push it over to only gargantuan creatures. And now we can handle all other creatures with our tactics. On top of that, we get runes. 
Now, usually I would say the Frost Rune is really bad, probably the worst of the runes, but here it, it shines quite well. As a bonus action, we have plus two to our con saves and plus two to our strength checks, meaning we are better at grappling and we're, we're better at protecting our concentration for 10 minutes. Two things we really want to do. Speaking of protecting our concentration, Cloud Rune is excellent for that. We should be hard to hit. If they do manage to hit us, now we can just take that hit and direct it at one of their allies, one of our allies, or if we have some little pet or a familiar, we can target that instead. Sorry, little buddy. Now, Fire Rune fits our flavor quite well. It gives us the, the bonuses to smithing tools, which is something that fits this Forge Minotaur quite well. I love that iron fire combination and that kind of compounds with it. So I like its flavor and it is a powerful feature. So you have level eight to practice and then by level nine you can swap out your runes if you want and you might consider swapping out the frost rune for the fire rune if you feel like you don't need to protect your concentration or you don't need more help with your strength checks but this is the last moment that you have to make that choice so choose wisely and that happens at ninth level speaking of ninth level we're going to pick up our second asi and this is a tough one because we could easily take plus two to strength plus two to wisdom plus two to constitution or we could take a feat like warcaster comes to mind because one we're not always going to have a weapon out because we threw it and we can still do our the reaction attacks with cantrips which we don't have yet but we will get them next level on top of that it also protects our concentration more so this is a pretty big toss-up i decided to go with boosting my constitution but i think this is a dealer's choice moment at level 10 onward we're going to go forge cleric an interesting choice here i think it fits the flavor quite well with that iron and fire vibe we've been going for we could have gone druid and i really wanted to go full caster here because we just needed more spell slots to be casting our spike growth, plain and simple. So we just want to start compounding how many spike growths we can do. So instead of just having to do one spike growth a fight, we can start doing multiple. If we lose concentration, we can just put it back up there. That finite resource becomes less fine from here on out. On top of that, it also expands our spell list significantly. If we went Druid, we don't really gain many new spells in the first level category or second level category. Cleric, we do, so it's a little bit better here. Forge Cleric also gives us a bonus to our AC, which again is that alternative defense we're looking for with such low constitution. And it all comes together with actually a really nice packaged flavor that the Forge Cleric actually fits what we've been going for better than a Ranger actually does, but we just made it work the way we want it to. And that, my friends, is the Iron Bowl. If you enjoyed this character build, we do a whole bunch of other ones. Check them out. I want to give a special thanks to our community for really set lighting the fuse on this build and making it a reality because I was stuck and you guys helped me get through that barricade. Big appreciation to you guys. Love you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next one. Later.